Anraj Karpathy recently spoke at CVPR 2021, which is a virtual conference on computer vision and pattern recognition. At this conference he shared a multitude of useful insights, revealing how and why Tesla is going all in on vision for their full self-driving software. Let's dive into all the details. So let's get started. Now when it comes to developing full self-driving software, Tesla is definitely a pioneer in this particular field. And while it may be taking longer than they initially would have hoped to develop a truly driverless vehicle, Tesla is making some seriously good progress in this particular aspect. We believe with some of the insights that we got from Andrej Karpathy's recent conference speech, we have some good insights into the details around Tesla's progress. Tesla was already one of the only major companies working on full self-driving cars that did not use lighter, and now they have taken that a step further. They are no longer including radar sensors on the new Model 3s and Model Ys, manufactured for the North American market. So when it comes to why Tesla is ditching radar and how this is possible. We believe Andridge Karpathy's speech at the CVPR 2021 conference definitely gives us some serious insights into the reasons for the switch away from radar. The first reason that we would like to cover really does a great job to explain both why and how Tesla is moving away from radar sensors. In this particular presentation Andridge mentioned that the quality of data that they are getting from cameras right now is better than that of the data they're getting from their radar sensors. Here's how Andridge described it in his own words, the vision system that we had been building over the last few years has been getting so incredibly good at is kind of leaving a lot of the other sensors in the dust. He also went on to mention that the cameras are doing most of the heavy lifting in terms of the perception that you see in the car. Later on he added, it's gotten to the point where we can start removing other sensors because they are becoming these crutches that you start to not really need at all. In simple terms, what Andridge is trying to illustrate is the fact that Tesla's ability to perceive the world around them with cameras only in their vehicles has gotten so good that they no longer need crutch, a radar. Let's take an example to understand this. Let's say a situation where someone breaks their leg, and of course they are given crutches to get around with. However once the leg is healed and the bone is strong once again, they no longer need the crutches. So Tesla is basically saying they no longer need the crutch of radar because their camera vision is so good now. When it comes to a direct comparison on how much better the data from their cameras is compared to the data that they're getting from the radar sensors, Andridge mentioned, vision is getting to the point where the sensor is like 100x better than say radar. Then if you have a sensor that is dominating the other sensor and so much better than the other sensor is actually holding you back and is starting to attribute noise. Andridge also mentioned the fact that accurate range finding or depth and velocity perception is not only possible with Tesla Vision, but it is now so accurate that radar data is no longer needed in their sensor suite. As they were developing what they call Tesla Vision, which simply describes their use of cameras only to perceive the world around them in their vehicles. As they were developing this, they definitely needed radar as a backup sensor and also to help test and validate the predictions they were making with their camera-based vision system. However now Tesla Vision has progressed beyond needing radar and the crutches had been removed. He also mentioned at the end of the video that this vision capability is possible due to the vast amounts of diverse data that Tesla is able to capture from the growing fleet of cars. This really leads us into the second reason that why Tesla is ditching radar and less about how Tesla is ditching radar. This is all about the problem of sensor fusion. To express this point, Andridge referenced to a recent Elon Musk's tweet that said, when radar and vision disagree, which one do you believe? Vision has much more precision, so better to double down on vision than to do sensor fusion. When you think about it, this seems to make complete sense. We think it does make sense to focus on the sensor that's doing all the heavy lifting in providing the better data and removing the extraneous radar sensor as it's really contributing noise. Now there is a valid argument 
that many will bring up about sensor redundancy being necessary for safety. However, redundancy from the inferior sensor may not really be that helpful in the long run. Also, Tesla has redundancy of a different kind built into their cars. Their full self-driving computer has built-in redundancy on the processing in, and Tesla has multiple cameras all around the car, which also provides some redundancy. No added benefit of removing radar sensors from Tesla's vehicles, as it appears like it solved the problem of phantom braking. Andridge talked about scenarios like, say going under a bridge, which in the past would confuse a radar sensor, and this led to unnecessary or phantom braking. That's this new camera-only based approach seems to solve this problem, and phantom braking should no longer be an issue. The next reason that we would like to discuss that Andridge mentioned in a video. It's actually a lot more important than you might think, and that is the issue of focus. Being able to focus in on cameras only, and not having to worry about focusing on data that comes from radar sensors, or in other people's cases lighter sensors. Tesla has a very talented, but somewhat small group of engineers currently working on the very difficult task of developing a truly safe full self-driving car. And as many companies have figured out in the past, and are starting to figure out now, this is a really difficult thing to do. To take an engineer's focus away from camera-based vision and waste time on radar data, which according to Andridge, is inferior to camera vision data, seems kind of silly. It seems to make more sense to give you your entire focus to the superior sensor suite, which in the end we believe will be the key to test of success, and in this case putting all of their sensor eggs in one basket appears like the right thing to do. The next aspect that we would like to discuss really isn't so much a reason why or how Tesla removed radar for their vehicles, but more dives into a side by product or benefit of removing radar from their vehicles. This comes down to this scalability of Tesla's full self-driving software and hardware. Since the cost definitely matters when it comes to the affordability and scalability of a full self-driving fleet of cars. According to a Mobileye presentation recently, lighter sensors costs around 10 times as much as radar sensors do, and they made it clear that lighter sensors are unlikely to drastically come down in cost. Mobileye has to deal with the cost of lighter, because they are currently developing their own lighter sensors in-house. Tesla already had a huge cost benefit by not relying on expensive lighter sensors, and now they're taking this to the next level. When you compare the costs of a camera to a radar sensor, cameras definitely have a huge cost advantage. In the coming future, full self-driving software will be more of a commodity, so every penny matters. So Tesla is developing a system that requires less expensive sensors and doing all the hard work on the back. This will allow them to reduce their hardware costs significantly and make their products the most affordable. So with such a system, it will give them a huge competitive advantage if they choose to license this out in the future. Unless the cost of lighter is able to come down drastically, lighter-based solutions could be too expensive for a non-commercial consumer market. On the other hand, it appears like Tesla's cars will be more affordable as consumer vehicles and will allow full self-driving to be within reach of the masses for personal transportation. Moving on to reason 5, why Tesla is moving away from radar in their vehicles, really comes down to a core reason that Tesla didn't use lighter as well. If humans can drive with vision alone, then a car with cameras all around the vehicle should be able to drive itself with vision alone. In a presentation, Andridge put up a slide to illustrate why he believes a computer driving a vehicle is going to be very superior to human, and in many ways it already is. But he gave an example of a two-ton car traveling at around 80 miles per hour. While a human driver has a reaction latency of around 250 milliseconds which is a quarter of a second, a computer on the other hand has reaction latency of less than 100 milliseconds, which means less than one-tenth of a second. In simple terms what he's illustrating here is the fact that computers have the ability to process and react much quicker than humans, and thus should be able to avoid more issues, more accidents, and other hazardous things on the road. 
He also mentioned that a human has to turn his head and use mirrors to have situational awareness, whereas a Tesla vehicle with cameras all around the car has 360-degree awareness. He also mentioned that humans are very prone to distractions, like checking their phone, checking Instagram for instance, whereas computers are fully attentive. So the result of all this is that although humans can drive remarkably well with the limited amount of data that they have, with vision, their own depth perception, they still get into a lot of accidents. Whereas computer with camera-based vision should be able to avoid a lot of accidents and make us drive safer. So now that we've talked about the why and the how of Tesla's moving away from radar to camera-based division alone, we would like to move over to a very important question. How will Tesla's camera vision-based system be able to handle adverse weather situations? In a presentation, Andridge gave three examples of Tesla navigating hazardous road situations without problem with just camera-based vision. The first one involved debris coming up the car, the second example was a dust cloud that occluded the car's vision, and the third was driving on a snowy road. These were just three simple examples that Andridge used to illustrate how they can drive in adverse situations. But we are sure that Tesla is improving this even more and more. Also it's important to realize that if the road is so hazardous that a human shouldn't be driving on that road, then a self-driving car probably shouldn't be driving on that road. So really lot of these extreme cases that people bring up probably aren't really even an issue because no car should be driving in that particular weather at all. One last topic that we would like to address revolved around Andridge really giving a little bit of insight into how far Tesla is away from a truly driverless car. When referencing some driving examples, he said, it's actually fairly routine for us to have zero intervention drives I would say, in sparsely populated areas like Palo Alto. Then he added, I would say we definitely struggle a lot more in very adversarial environments like San Francisco. A lot of people working on autonomy of course, know all about that. So really to wrap all this up, as Andridge concluded in his presentation, we believe that when it comes to their singular focus on camera vision and their ditching of radar, that they are to borrow Andridge words, barking up the right tree. We believe they are going to be successful in their efforts and bring a truly self-driving system with camera vision alone and also affordable. That's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the Electric Arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.